Hi there everyone, my name is Jaakko. In this video I'll introduce you to booleans in Substance Designer and I'll show you a couple of examples that how we can take advantage of this. So uh, booleans are basically just on or off type of switch. So like I have this switch grayscale node in here and there's this is a switch that is all of true or false and then we can control uh, whether it uh, inputs uh, it outputs the input number one or input number two. So I'm just gonna uh, go and maybe you can expose this and I'm gonna go and create a input name and I'm gonna do like a color switch. I'm gonna call this color switch. And now if I'm gonna double click our graph node in here, we can see that we have now switch boolean and it has a default value of true. So we can control whether by, when we start whether by default, uh, it's uh, input number one or input number two. So I'm gonna maybe do this false and then we're gonna call this, we can make actually a group in here. And for example, if you want like a, have a, uh, several of this type of uh, switches in our, uh, no, in our graph, we just do like, I don't know, color. And then these switches, these um, parameters will be uh, under this same uh, group. So this is a very, very simple way now obviously we could do, if we have another, uh, let's say we have like a more complicated graph and we want to use one button to control several switches, I could also do like switch grayscale, like so, and I can also go and uh, select this color switch. So now if we do like, let's say, um, if we just do like, so, now we go in here and we uh, let's say do like we we are controlling now two switches at the same time. So this is a very powerful way to to create a kind of streamlined controls for more complicated uh, options uh, in our graphs. So this is one way that we can do this. Um, there's other nodes like this which have the boolean controls. So you can just like if when when there's a button that you need to control, you can just do it this way. This is one way. Another way that if you download any substances from the substance source, you can see that often these, well, this is actually my substance, but like often you can see that you have these channels in these substances. And what this does is that often that we have a specular and gloss workflow, and then we have the metallic and rough. So if we wanna uh, make substance that outputs both, we can do do it by using boolean. So I have like a output specular, closeness and diffuse. And when we enable these, we can now see that we have enabled those outputs in our um, substance like so. There's a very, very powerful way to to create like multi-output uh, substances that are compatible with both workflows. So I'm gonna show you how to take advantage of this possibility. So um, what I have, we can maybe make it a little bit uh, more complicated, more nicer graph. So maybe just like do tile um, tile generator. So we have something that we can actually see in our viewport. I'm gonna maybe do that. Uh, let's just like do like so. And then what I could do is that maybe I could do invert, invert grayscale like so. And then we have this. And um, yeah, we have a, let's see, we have roughness and normal in here. Maybe we could actually just do real quick normal. So we have some material, uh, maybe do like that. So this becomes this kind of tile, tile floor. Again, it's, it's very, very, <laughs> very, very simple. <laughs> anyway, uh, maybe the roughness, we could put some value to roughness as well. Um, uniform color, maybe do um, something like that and and maybe those uh, grout areas could be a little bit more rough so I'm gonna do like uh, just throw some values in here that doesn't have to be really perfect right now. Now we have a very very simple basic sub substance we're working with. All right so now we have this and let's say that uh, we want to output these to uh, 
specular and gloss workflow as well. So now we are just dealing with uh, basic metallic roughness. So the way how we can start doing this is that we need to first like create uh, another another base color because uh, by uh, default this is metallic roughness. The, if you go and create new substance and you select this by metallic roughness, it outputs these and this base color actually is called diffuse in uh, spec gloss. So I'm gonna go and do new output and I'm gonna go and call this diffuse and then I'm gonna add item I'm gonna select diffuse so now substance knows that this output node is gonna be diffuse I'm gonna do group I'm gonna do material because this is also really kind of important because this material um, it groups these in in one material so if we have like I have this uh, slate roof that I did so if we hit number three we can see that we get this green output this green node and this contains all of those outputs as a one single material and in order to in order this work properly we need to uh, we need to tell them substance that this is going to be the same group so what we really want to do is that we want to make sure that this is only visible when we have uh, the button uh, selected so what I like to do in here is that I'm going to write this really simple um, phrase in here, this simple command in the visible if. So I'm going to do input uh, and what I'm going to do is do the brackets and then put quotation marks and then what I'm going to do call this uh, diffuse uh, maybe output put output diffuse something like that where is the okay so now we have this phrase output diffuse so what we need to do now it says that uh, we key not found output diffuse but no problem we're going to create that so i'm going to double click our uh, graph in here and then what i'm going to do is hit plus and what i can do is that select boolean from here an identifier is going to be output diffuse, what we just wrote. All right. So now uh, this no longer exclamation mark. Now it already substance knows that now we have a control for visibility of this output. So let's say that we're going to go in here, for example, and I'm going to do this. And now we can see that by default, we don't have, we have base color, normal roughness and so on. So I'm going to go and enable this. Now we can see that we are getting extra output for our diffuse. All right, so this is the first step, I suppose. So what we need to do next is we need to create the rest of those. All right, so uh, we have now diffuse. So what I'm going to do is that maybe just clean this color a little bit like so. Mm. We'll go and create another output. Okay, output, and what I'm gonna make you is just copy a couple. I know that I'm gonna be needing more of these, so. so now we have base color and diffuse. So, oh, yeah, also it's good if we actually plug it in, <laughs> and also it's good that if we actually do it properly by using color. So, I'm gonna do that. All right, so now we have diffuse and base color both. So then we need to do our uh, glossiness. So normally, if we just do it real quick, I'm going to add, add item and do gloss. Um, glossiness in here. Again, the group should be material. Like so, and label this uh, glossiness. Identifier glossiness. Like so. So now we have a glossiness in here, and the glossiness is, I think, uh, we can just invert our roughness because that's the, pretty much what it is. So now we have a glossiness, and again, we can do invisible, uh, visible if uh, I'm going to do input. Again, if I can write this and then do. Uh, input 
input glossiness and then just do like so all right so now we have this i'm just gonna use that as like copy and paste so that i don't mess up the writing i'm gonna go and create one more in here call this boolean identifier and then label this uh, output closeness like so and then also it's nice that if we actually create uh, groups to these and labels so I'm gonna go diffuse labels is are just like what's shown actually in the parameters and group I'm gonna go call these channels and then in the closeness group channels and then in the identifier, I'm just going to do closeness. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, in the label, I'm going to do closeness. Like so. And default is false for the both. All right. So now we have this. And then we have just one more. We need to... Yeah, it's good to do if we do actually like the specular. Um, I'm going to do like... I'm just going to check from here. Just, uh, I don't exactly or never... <laughs> memorize this value so this is like the this type of a uh, materials which is like a rock or brick or something like that um we're just gonna do uh let me copy this value so i'm gonna do like uh, uh uniform color and i'm just gonna use this you know, like, mm, something like this is normally uh 0 0.23 is uh, approximately suitable for the specular value so i'm gonna go our la 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 in here and uh, then we have this no what I'm call this specular and then what I'm gonna do is call specular and then uh, like so and then we do and paste this plug it in you can actually dock this like if you want to clean up the craft a little bit you can just hit D it docks the, docks the node like so and then color space, yeah, I don't know. I don't actually remember right off the bat what's the correct way to, to do it. But anyway, I'm gonna label this specular. Specular, and then group uh, material. And again, visible if uh, input, uh, like so, I'm gonna call this spec input. specular like so well, now we have the this in here mm, don't need to write some copy paste that in here and do just gonna do that input specular specular and then this is gonna be boolean like so and I'm gonna call these channels like so and if all this falls mm. all right i think this works so now we have those so um if we now test this um i'm gonna drag and drop this guy in here you want to gonna test this it it works uh, like so and then if we enable these we can see that now we have diffuse output glossiness output and also specular output so now we have used booleans to to specify which outputs we want to be visible uh, be usable in our substance so just one way that we can utilize the booleans and we can go really more complicated we can create more uh, sections of graph that are going to be visible in our graphs by using these we can we can really really uh customize and and uh, streamline the controls the, the parameters in our substances by using the booleans so definitely if you haven't tried these do try it's quite uh, fun and useful so i hope you find this useful uh, if you want to uh, see more just uh, subscribe and also hit the bell so you can see the notifications when i release some new videos so this was Jakko. i hope to see you soon bye bye